Hello, my name is Shamni Rogers and I'm with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. It takes a team of professionals to protect our children. In Missouri, the Sexual Assault Forensic Exam Child Abuse Resource and Education, also known as the Safe Care Network, provides a coordinated and comprehensive medical response to child abuse and neglect. This response ensures children have access to quality medical care necessary for their health and safety. The Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services administers the Safe Care Program. The department has partnered with Missouri Kids First to provide education and support to medical providers. The Safe Care Network is a network of providers, medical providers across the state, who are committed to providing expert medical care to children who have been maltreated. The network also includes supporting staff who ensure that those providers are appropriately trained and get appropriate support in the work that they do. I became a, a child abuse pediatrician and a safe care provider um, because going through uh, medical school and pediatric residency and training, uh, I became very interested in advocating for children and the opportunity to work in this field allows me uh, to work with other people who have the same goals and also to affect individual children who are in the need of the most advocacy and also to have greater systems uh, effect to impact the entire response to child maltreatment and the children and the families that are involved in that process. To me, being a safe care provider means that I am willing to provide care to the children who need it most, and that is Missouri's maltreated children. That care includes both the care for their health and their safety, but also my willingness to collaborate with our multidisciplinary team members and agencies who are responsible for the protection of children. So all children who are suspected victims of child maltreatment should be offered a timely medical evaluation with a provider who is trained and experienced at providing that care. To be a safe care provider in the state of Missouri, you have to fulfill certain obligations and requirements. Uh, the initial training uh, for a safe care provider is two days long. One day is focused on child physical abuse and neglect, and the other is focused on sexual abuse. Um, the trainings are part lecture and part interactive so that people are getting um, basic skills through a didactic or just lecture setting and then the afternoons are often interactive where um, trainees get asked uh, questions in small groups and talk about cases and sort of problem solve together. The update trainings are also annual and uh, uh, consist of either webinars uh, or uh, a once a year meeting where uh, it's one day long and those update trainings um, include new topics or updates in new, new science that's come out um, that can be useful in these evaluations. Safe Care Mentoring is set up to help uh, people who are new to the field. Um, oftentimes people would join the Safe Care Network and uh, have some experience but uh, feel uncomfortable with difficult cases or going to court. So the Safe Care Mentoring Program was established to help those individuals learn more about how to take care of children, uh, more about their diagnostic criteria, um, and more about uh, potentially defending their opinions in court. Uh, the webinars were started a few years ago because uh, in the past to be a, a remain a safe care provider you had to come to a once a year training and not everybody could make that once a year training and so webinars are hosted monthly um, and uh, it's one hour over the noon hour usually and it gives people an opportunity to uh, maintain their status as a safe care provider. The, the webinars are neat because it uh, allows for um, not only sort of a didactic or a case review setting but also question and answer and we vary the content based on what the providers find most useful or if there's new science that people need to know right now we can get it out then as opposed to having to wait for um, the annual update training. I, I think the one thing that makes this job uh, worthwhile, or two things, as we mentioned before, making sure that children are appropriately identified as abused or non-abused, but also making sure that those children are safer, that after we encounter the child and provide our services, that child is in a safer place than before we encountered them. I first think of a small child, she was about 
seven or eight years old. And after we were done with her medical exam, so I had already performed the entire physical exam, we had talked about the findings afterwards, and then it was time to sit down with her mother. And I always give the child the opportunity to be present when I talk to the, to the family. So she wanted to be there. And as I told her mother about what she, the child told me and what I saw, this child was watching her mother. She wasn't watching me, she was watching her mother. And when I was done talking, she said to her mother, Mom, she believes me. She believes me. See, she believes me. And I knew at that moment right, that everything I did up to that point was so valuable to her and in her interaction with her mother, but also her feeling of how she was cared for at that moment. Um, I would I would do everything exactly the same if a child felt that way at the end of the visit. Working to enhance the medical response to child abuse is such a privilege for Missouri Kids First. We are so grateful to the resource center directors, to the safe care providers in Missouri communities that work so hard and so tirelessly to do the right thing for our children and to make our system even better. The Department of Health and Senior Services, uh, the executive branch, the legislature, all the folks that work on this team in child protection have done amazing work in the last few years and I'm so grateful to be a part of that. I am even more excited though about where I think we can go and the, and the, uh, the enthusiasm we have right now and the potential we have to make even greater changes to benefit children and I know that in the next five to ten years we will look back on where we are now and, and know that we have come very far and that we have saved and changed many children's lives.